Hi. Um, this is an introduction to the um, lecture that I'm missing on Friday. Um, and this is an introduction to our LAM for the year. The LAM is a liberal arts module. This is something that um, we're doing, uh, we've been doing for a, a few semesters, and we're doing that in partnership with other departments, including engineering and statistics and data science. So I'm going to tell you a little bit about the LAMs and um, how that's going to influence our um, projects for and homework and lab assignments for uh, the near future. So a little bit of foreground information. Um, we, as a department, um, were asked to participate in, in, um, in a grant proposal um, from the Association for American Colleges and Universities um, with the goal of retaining underrepresented students in computer science. There's a big problem in computer science right now, and I'm going to um, tell you a little bit about it and um, why we are um, doing this, this slam. So we apply, we got the grant, we got it for three years, and um, when we wrote the proposal, we said, well, we can, we can help retain co um, computer, uh, students in computer science by uh, doing two things which we think will make a difference. One is to organize our TAs better. We didn't have a very good organization, so we decided that um, we, sh we uh, should organize um, this with uh, the lab instructor, lab instructor uh, head TA, pick one of the TA students who has, who has been a TA for the department, teaching assistant for a while, um, who's been good and interested in, in, in taking some responsibilities and organize the other TAs. So interview them, train them, um, as to as TAs to work uh, to to work for longer hours, so we need fewer TAs, but they're more involved in the department. Um, and to introduce liberal arts modules. So the idea here is to show you guys um, how we can use programming in um, an area that has nothing to do with science. And that's the idea of the LAM, a liberal arts module. It's a set of lectures, a lab, and a homework assignment where we look at something outside the sciences and see how we can um, do some programming and solve a particular problem. Before I do that, I want to show you some statistics, and that's taken from code.org. And this organization has a lot of good information and takes it from pretty reliable places. So the first graph that they have is this one. I've added the red line here. To show you where we are. This is the time scale in years, so we're almost at the beginning of 2016. The, um, the line here represents the number of students graduating with, with a computer science degree. The line here shows the number of computing jobs, the number of jobs that require some knowledge of computer science, some programming skills. And you see that already the difference between the number of students graduating and the jobs waiting outside is quite big. And it's, if we don't do anything, it's going to get bigger. So there's a huge need for um, increasing the number of computer science students. Ideally, that curve should be right here in the middle. There should be as many graduating as there are jobs. You don't want to be in the other situation. Actually, it should be slightly less. So you, you want to... to be able to have a choice. So right now, it's very good for, s for students, it's very bad for the economy. Um, so it, it, it cannot be too bad for the economy for too long, otherwise the whole country, the whole world suffers. So um, something has to be done. Um, now if you look at the, the jobs out there, whenever you graduate and, and, and look at all the possible jobs that, that are waiting, more than half are computing jobs some jobs that require some level of computing. If you look at all the students graduating right now, only 2% are computer science students. So you see, you see the, the, the problem. So this is different from the previous graph. This is just jobs altogether. So the previous graph was showing only the, the percentage um, of computing jobs. But, so that's what's happening now in terms of the number of computer science degrees. It's way too small compared to uh, compared to just STEM and, and other um, uh, other science um, fields. So very, very small. And moreover, um, if you look at the, the proportion of men in blue to women in green, it's about 12%. The 
57% of degrees, of bachelor's degrees, are earned by women, but only 12% computer science. Um, so of the computer science degrees, only 12% uh, are given to women. So Smith is in the ideal position to make a difference here. Um, so that's why you will see big companies come to campus and try to partner up with um, with departments, and in particular Smith. Google has been um, uh, increasing its, its presence on campus, trying to partner up with computer science and helping students, giving, intern, um, giving uh, tips on interviews, and uh, now even offering um, a J-term course on mobile computing. Um, this will continue happening, um, and this is just a way for the big companies to try to increase the, um, the number of computer science degrees and also to try to redress that um, terrible situation that they are all in where have, they have way too few women in their, in, in their company. So, um, so that's what we did. That's what, that was our response to, to the, the proposal. And so um, this is just a, a summary. And um, what we decided in, in our proposal was that we were going to work with the lab and a pyramid of TAs, but also create these, these, these uh, liberal arts modules. So let me tell you about the module we're going to do in this class, this semester. And so I partnered up with somebody not in STEM, um, Professor Hélène Byzantin of the French department. Um, no reason why I would choose somebody from the French department, except that she had done a wonderful um, project, research project, where she took maps of Paris, of old Paris, dating several centuries back, and decided with the help of computer scientists, mo mainly at, com at Emerson College, to, to map these maps, to overlay them on Google Maps. Um, so digitization, and then scaling, rotating the maps, um, and all this just to make teaching of novels such as um, The Hunchback of Notre Dame or novels that, that take place in Paris, French literature, just to give students a better understanding of what that Paris looked like at that time, how big it was, and, and its relationship with the current Paris. So um, I recorded um, Professor Vizantin's lectures when she came to, to give the lecture to the class. It's about a half hour lecture, and I have the videos, I have three videos, and I'm going to ask you to, to, to watch them. So the, the link is right here. Um, if you click here, you're going to see that I have a special page on the wiki um, that we use for class, and you have three videos. This one is 10 minutes, this one is 10 minutes, and this one is 12 minutes. So your assignment for this lecture, this Friday, um, is to watch the three videos, answer a quiz on Moodle that will ask you a few questions just to make sure you've understood the videos and that you've watched them. Um, and then in the next weeks, we're going to work on maps and how to digitize maps and how to represent maps, how to store them. So to give you a little bit of a heads up on, on what we're going to be doing, we're going to take a map of Smith's, and this is just a map that I've taken from um, one of the Smith's web, page, web pages. There's probably better ones, so if you find a better one, I'm happy to, to change that and use a better map of Smith. And what we um, going to do with this is that we're going to build a graphics program, the same graphics uh, library that we're using for rectangles and cars moving and wheels. We're going to use it and display an image, which is an, an option we haven't used yet, but you can display, you can put an image in the background of the window. And then we're going to write a program that will allow you to click, for example, if we want to um, uh, define the outline of Burton, we could click here, click here, click here, click here, click here, click here, and click back here, and create a polygon. So a polygon is just a series of points, a list of points. Um, but it, it works very similarly to a rectangle. It has a move method, it has a draw method, you can set its colors, um, you can set the outline. And so we'll do that for all the buildings, and uh, maybe those of you interested can do the streets, you can do the river, um, you can do the parking, some of you may be interested in trees, you may be displaying whether some particular trees are on campus of interest. Remember, we are campus is in Arboretum. Um, 
all the, the trees are tagged and um, and we, we have their history. So we, we can do that. We're going to do that together. So from this, we're going to create a CSV file, comma separated value file, with all the information for the buildings. And you see here that even this may not be spelled quite right. That's what happens when you deal with data that others have put together, is that we're going to have to deal with reconstructing the data from, um, from what is there. So don't worry, you're not going to have to digitize all the buildings on campus. There's plenty of people in the class, 96 of you. So um, we can do some crowdsourcing. And um, all of us together can probably digitize this whole campus pretty nicely and have a big CSV file that will be the digitization of a whole map of Smith College. Then when we have that, we'll use another file, which I've um, obtained from John Karras, who is the um, the GIS geographical information system specialist at Smith and he just happens to know when all the buildings at Smith were built. The oldest one, Sessions House, was built in 1710 and the most recent is um, the uh, infirmary. Uh, but I've, I have this file so we'll write a program that will merge this information with this information find out where Burton Hall is here and Burton Hall is here therefore we're going to be able to draw this polygon in the color corresponding to the date when it was built. So we're going to be, we're going to be able to color code um, the buildings. And here is an example of what it could look like. This is an early version of a project that was done um, earlier, but you see different buildings. There's no streets, there's no river, there's no, nothing else, so it's a little harder to, to distinguish what's what. But um, number one is Ford Hall, so this is our building here for the class. And that's the theater, the art building, and so on. Um, so that's what it is in our future. But the most, the most, the closest future to you is this one now, where you're going to be watching the videos and answering the Moodle quiz. So please do that, and hopefully it will be fun. And I'll see you very soon.